Okay, so this is a new series called Edible Chem, where I'll be using only food grade supplies and clean glassware. At the end, I should be able to taste or eat what I make. The purpose of this series is to explore the production of some of the chemicals that are used in our foods and as supplements. Even though the stuff that I produce should be food grade, this video should be treated as entertainment purposes only, and I really don't encourage anyone to recreate what they see. If you make a mistake, you could potentially poison yourself. Anyway, with the disclaimer done, we can move on to the actual video. Piperine and its isomer chavacine are responsible for the spiciness of black pepper. It works by acting on the protein receptors TRPV1 and TRPV2, which normally sense heat. These receptors are found on nerve cells, and when they're bound and activated by piperine, it tricks the brain into thinking it's sensing heat. Piperine isn't the only molecule that does this, and there's two other major ones, which are actually a lot more potent, capsaicin and allyl isothiocyanate. Capsaicin is found in chili peppers, and allyl isothiocyanate is found in horseradish and wasabi. I plan to make a video on each of these sometime in the future. Another interesting thing about piperine is that it can inhibit the breakdown of certain xenobiotics. Xenobiotics are basically just molecules that don't occur naturally in your body, and it's most often referring to things like drugs or pollutants. So if piperine is ingested, it can inhibit the breakdown of certain things and make them more effective. A good example of this is curcumin, which is found in turmeric. Curcumin has a lot of potentially beneficial effects, but unfortunately, it's broken down by the liver way too quickly, and barely any at all makes it into the bloodstream. To counteract this, it's often coupled with piperine, which inhibits the enzymes enough that some of the curcumin actually makes it. So today I'm going to be extracting piperine from some regular black pepper. The classic way of doing this requires repeated solvent washings, which is both wasteful and labor-intensive. To help me out because I'm lazy, I've decided to use a Soxid extractor, which will allow me to do less work and use less solvent. The Soxid extractor is actually a really cool piece of glassware, and I'll explain exactly how it works later in the video. In terms of supplies, I just needed three things, the pepper itself, potassium hydroxide, and isopropyl alcohol. Both the potassium hydroxide and the isopropyl alcohol are food grade. The first thing that I need to do is crush the pepper, so I use a coffee grinder. It's important not to crush it too much though, because if the powder is too fine, the soxid extractor isn't going to drain properly. I really thought I could get away with crushing it into a fine powder like you see here, but it ended up being a total failure. What you really want is something like this, which is being crushed, but it's still somewhat granular. I didn't do it, but before moving on, it might be a good idea to pass the powder through something like a strainer to get rid of the larger pieces. I set up the Soxid extractor, and I slide a few pieces of cotton to the bottom. At the bottom of the extraction chamber, there's a hole that leads to the siphon tube, and it's really important that the cotton covers this. It's also important not to pack the cotton too tightly, otherwise things won't drain properly. Once the cotton has been placed, I pour in the chopped up pepper. I then place another cotton ball on top. I add a condenser above the extractor, and I turn on the water pump. This entire apparatus is then attached to a flask that's been loaded with isopropyl alcohol. I set up a stir plate and a heating mantle, and I'm pretty much ready to get things started. The heating and stirring is turned on, and I bring the alcohol to a boil. As the alcohol boils, you can see the hot vapor traveling up and condensing on the walls of the glass. The hot vapor will slowly travel up the glass, and it will eventually make it to the top. When it does, it goes into the condenser, which turns it back into a liquid. The now liquid, but still hot isopropyl alcohol, is dripped onto the pepper. As the process continues, 
the extraction chamber will slowly fill up with alcohol. I've turned the extractor to the side so you can get a better idea as to what's going on. As the extraction chamber is filled with solvent, some of the liquid is pushed out through the bottom and into the siphon tube. The level of solvent in the siphon should be about the same as the level in the extraction chamber. As more solvent is added, the level will continue to rise until it eventually gets to the top of the tube. Once it makes it past the bend, gravity will take over and all of the solvent will be drained from the extraction chamber. All of the solvent is dumped into the flask below with the rest of the alcohol. This marks the end of one cycle and in theory we can cycle it as many times as we want. For this extraction, I'm only going to do it for two hours, but there are preparations that require several hours or even days. So at this point, you can see why the Soxid extractor is so useful. It basically allows us to do repeated hot solvent extractions using a relatively small amount of solvent. If I didn't have a SOX lid, I could just boil the hot pepper in a whole bunch of isopropanol, or do manual repeated hot solvent extractions. Both of these options require more solvent, and the second one can be a lot of work. So two hours later, I was left with this yellowish brown liquid. The solution contains the piperine, but it also has a bunch of other stuff that was extracted along with it. This includes things like fats, as well as anything that's soluble in hot isopropanol. A little bit of the pepper made it past my cotton, so before moving on, I need to quickly filter it. I packed a cotton ball into a funnel, and I filtered it through. Once everything had passed through, I washed the round bottom and the funnel with a little bit of warm isopropanol. I took away the funnel, and I added a magnetic stir bar to the flask. I now need to get rid of most of the isopropanol, and to do this, I use a simple distillation. In the meantime, I prepare a base solution by dissolving about 1 gram of potassium hydroxide in 10 milliliters of isopropanol. This takes quite a long time, and it doesn't really dissolve very well. To speed things up, I heated it a few times using a microwave. Eventually, the big chunks were gone, and this is pretty much good enough. Once I had about 15 milliliters left in the flask, I stopped the distillation. I then added the potassium hydroxide solution to the stuff that remained. When the potassium hydroxide is added, it reacts with acids as well as some fats that were extracted along with the piperine. This will convert them into something that's soluble in water, so in the next step, when we add water to crash out the piperine, these things don't come out with it. It also allegedly reacts with the chavacine, but I couldn't find a good source to support this. So after about an hour, I take it off the stand, and there's quite a bit of solid stuff. This is very easily removed by just passing it through a little bit of cotton. The cotton and the flask are washed a few times with a little bit of isopropanol. The funnel is removed, and now it's time to isolate the piperine. To do this, I just need to add some water. Piperine is really insoluble in water, so adding even a small amount greatly reduces its solubility. Every time water is added, we can see a cloud of piperine crashing out. Eventually, when the water is added, it doesn't look like more piperine is crashing out, and at this point we're done. The beaker is then placed in a fridge for a few days to allow the piperine to fully precipitate. In the meantime, I start to clean things up, and I empty out all of the pepper from my Soxlet extractor. It's still wet with isopropyl alcohol, but I'm going to wait a few days for it to fully dry out. A couple days later, I take my piperine out of the fridge, and it's time to filter it off. I quickly do a vacuum filtration, and I leave the vacuum on for a few minutes to dry things up. Using a spatula, I scrape the piperine off the filter, and I'm left with this paste. One thing to note is that some of the piperine is super fine, and it's not able to be trapped by the filter. 
It might look like a lot, but there actually isn't very much here. Everything is transferred to a small beaker and I add some isopropanol. The hot plate is turned on and everything is dissolved. The initial amount of isopropanol that I added was a little bit too much, so I let some boil off. The beaker is covered with plastic wrap and I place it somewhere to cool. It's really important that it cools down slowly, otherwise the crystals turn out pretty crappy. The crystallization is also really slow, and even once it gets to room temperature, no crystals formed. Only after 10 minutes did I see anything start to form. The start of this time lapse is about 30 minutes after it already cooled to room temperature. The time lapse was taken over about an hour and a half, so in total it took around 2 hours for most of the crystals to form. I left it overnight in the fridge, and this is what I had in the morning. The crystals were separated on a coffee filter, and they were washed with a very small amount of ice-cold isopropyl alcohol. The filter was removed, and the isopropanol was allowed to evaporate. After about a day or so, I was left with some nice and dry piperine crystals. My final recovery was about 1 gram. I extracted it from 23 grams of pepper, so this represents 4% of the total mass. Black pepper typically contains between 5 and 9%, so this is pretty close. With piperine, it's actually possible to grow pretty big crystals, and the ones I have here are quite small. To get larger crystals, it needs to be crystallized over the course of days or weeks, and not just hours. Anyway, now I'm going to move on to the taste test that I promised. Just before I do it though, remember that this is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and you shouldn't do it yourself. Although piperine is a relatively common supplement sold in stores, it can interfere with certain drugs and be potentially dangerous. Okay, so here are the products of the extraction. On the left here, I have the pepper that I extracted from, which kind of looks washed out and lacking color. On the right here, I have the piperine, which is double recrystallized and should be pretty much pure. So we can start things out and just see what it tastes like. So take a little scoop. It still definitely tastes like pepper, but it also tastes pretty horrible. It has the pungency of piperine or chavacine. So clearly I didn't extract everything. There's, it actually just tastes like regular pepper in terms of spiciness. So I guess I didn't extract nearly everything, but it's missing a lot of other flavors and it honestly just tastes, tastes pretty horrible. Okay, so moving on to the piperine and I'll use a different spoon just to keep my piperine clean. So obviously the piperine is going to be a lot more potent, so I shouldn't take as much. So I actually took about the same amount. So I have, so I have just a little bit at the edge of the spoon here. So I'll take a taste. And it actually just, it tastes like nothing. It tastes like the spiciness of pepper, but also nothing. It really doesn't taste that bad. And in terms of spiciness, it's really not that bad either. So that's about it. The pepper that I extracted from tastes absolutely horrible. Well, not maybe not absolutely horrible, but it tastes pretty bad. I definitely wouldn't want to eat it. It tastes, it does not, it does not taste good. The piperine, on the other hand, is, it's spicy, but it's not that spicy. The... I think the Scoville rating was 100,000 or something, which is like 20 times that of a jalapeno. But I, I don't know if I agree with that. It's, I mean, I had a decently sized scoop and it really does not, it really isn't that spicy. Anyway, that's about it for now. If you guys have any other suggestions or things you'd like to see in this series, please let me know in the comments. Some of you may have noticed that I'm wearing a Nile Red shirt in the video, and if you want to pick one up yourself, you can check out the link to Spreadshirt in the description. A big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon. 
Everyone who supports me will see my videos at least 24 hours before I post it to YouTube, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end of the video like you see here. Also, all supporters are able to directly message me, and I try to respond within a day.